everyone, I'm Lisa Waltham and welcome to Quilt Stories. Today we're talking to Lois Parrish Evans, who is in New Zealand. She's in the North Island of New Zealand and my first New Zealand guest. So welcome, Lois. Thank you, Lisa. It's lovely to be on your um, YouTube video series. I'm delighted to be talking to you today. Thank you. It's great. And we're sort of in nearly the same time zone, which makes it a lot easier this time. Yes. <laughs> today, we're going to be talking about a quilt called Gaudi's Legacy. I'm an absolute total Gaudi fanatic. I love his work. And I think this is one of my favourite quilts that I've seen depicting some of his motifs. So the quilt we're talking about today is called Gaudi's Legacy. And I just love Gaudi's work. And I especially love this quilt because it really depicts some of the fabulous motifs that um, Gaudi used. And I particularly like the mosaic and the painted flower the blue painted flower. So starting point. Yes, and as you know, Lisa, um, so much goes into creating the quilt before we even start making the quilt. And so it seemed really important to add um, photos of the process leading up to actually um, beginning the quilt. And I am also a fan of Gaudi's. I love Gaudi. I've been to um, Barcelona and I took lots and lots of photos. And this was an opportunity to put some of those uh, images into a quilt. I was pretty excited about getting Barcelona for, as my first choice for an international cities challenge between Japan, uh, New Zealand and France. And uh, members of Aotearoa quilters could uh, select a city one of 30 international cities and I selected Barcelona as my first one and uh, it gave me the opportunity to pull out all of my Gaudi photos <laughs> and uh, focus mostly on Gaudi because even though Barcelona is much more than Gaudi it, it, it there's so much of Gaudi in Barcelona and so uh, when I went to after I'd been to Europe I did a, an exhibition and it was mostly liner prints and so you can see in the photo there not only do I have photos, but I've got little um, photocopies of liner prints that I did, of a liner print that I did for that exhibition many years ago. And um, they were just, I borrowed those motifs to put in because it's... So I started with a drawing. I found a, um, a photo that had nice lines in it and a bit further along you'll see the photo, but gave me the opportunity, the structure for the quilt, um, which was to divide the... Um, 50 by 50 area in two thirds and uh, gave me a foreground, a middle ground and a background. And so I then went about selecting photos and that's a close up of the, the drawing with the um, one of the rooftop details, structures and the one of the spires of the Sagrida Familia in the background. That's an amazing building, isn't it? Sagrada. Oh, yeah. it's stunning. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's I actually got actually, to climb one of those spires. Oh, wow. That's impressive. It's actually yeah, I'm, I'm, really pretty ugly, but just the separate components yes. of it are just mind-boggling. So once again, just auditioning the photos and thinking about what I could put in the foreground to create a feature. So, and as you know, there are lots of um, Gaudi features that could be used. And um, so this photo is just about showing the process of auditioning photos to see what I might use. Okay, so this one I have begun to, I've decided that I want to do a mosaic because Gaudi is kind of synonymous with um, mosaics. And a lot of, he's, you know, one of the things I like about him, not only do I like the architecture, but I like his surface design. I love mosaics and, um, raw edge applique lends itself to that kind of mosaic effect and so the black raw edge applique design there is a detail from this one of the ceilings in the Sagrida Familia and so I wanted to include that because it's quite a strong motif cut up lots of green and blue beautiful fabrics for the mosaic. Did you pre-fuse them? Yes. Right. Yes, they've got Vliza Fix on the back and um, I just would um, Vliza Fix a, a number of fabrics and then cut them up and yep. rearrange them. This image is a drawing that I started to do of another moat, um, a stained glass window actually, uh, in the Sagrida Familia. And um, I actually drew um, it from a photograph and it became the central motif for the, the foreground 
as you can see here. So that's where I got my inspiration from. And it's actually from the outside of the stained glass window that rather than the inside. Yes. Um, because I really liked the um, colour scheme in this photo and it seemed to fit with what I was going to do for the whole quilt. So rather than get it from the inside, I took it from the outside. Um, and then, you know, artistic licence, I embellished it a little bit more. Is this a, your usual technique of taking images from photos and drawing up your own sketches and then recreating them in fabric? Yes, I love to, um, I take a lot of detailed photos and most of my work is from nature, as you can sort of see in the quotes behind me, but, um, and then I focus on detail and I de often deconstruct and reconstruct. Um, for this one, I didn't do too much deconstruction, but it took a lot of details and I used artistic license, obviously, to make it work as a design. But yes, I love to, to work in that way. So here is the, the finished motif and you have painted this onto canvas or a, a sort of a... Uh, no, it's not actually painted on canvas. It's painted on um, cotton fabric. Mm -hmm. And I had not long participated in a Judy Coates Perez workshop where she, we were doing a painting workshop and she introduced me to using freezer paper. And on the back of that cotton fabric is freezer paper and freezer paper has now become my second best friend because <laughs> I love, it creates a, a really f a stable surface to paint on and uh, you know I, I guess it's similar to to being a canvas which meant I could get such lovely straight lines. <laughs> yeah. I see in the background there um, is that your final mock-up drawing of the, the total quilt? It is and that I photocopied that um, on a two sheets of A3 paper to try and get it as close to the 50 centimetre square that it needed to be to experiment with colour the colour scheme. So that's the um, a photocopy of the original drawing just because I didn't want to colour the original drawing in case it didn't work. So that's that's part of my process as well to explore colour, the colour, the colour you know, work out some of the colour before I start. Not always, but a lot of the time. <laughs> no, we, we never do everything the same every time. Exactly. It's all yes. about um, experimenting and playing and just enjoying the process. This is the photo that I took the structure of the quilt from and I love the lines in that photo, what it suggested and that gave me the rock wall to mosaic at the front mm -hmm. and gave me the middle section in the background. So um, this is the painting of that. I used a, um, a combination of transparent, you know, the PBO, which I'd been introduced to at Judy's um, workshop and acrylic paints. So uh, depending on the colour that I needed, Right. I don't have gold in the transparent, so I used you know, acrylic gold for that. Mm. And that's um, finishing the painting of the middle ground, which, you know, it, it looks like it doesn't take very long, but those sorts of things all take their time. Oh. It's amazing how the length of time it takes to um, create a quilt, as you would appreciate, Lisa. <laughs> yes. and, uh, so you have placed the cutout of your finished, the blue motif. That's just mm. So this one was playing with placement of where it should go and also where I wanted the black raw edge applique shapes to go. And I always cut out my raw edge, my shapes, both the negative and the positive in case I want to use one or the other because I like using um, both of them if I can. Yep. Don't always use them. And in this case, I didn't use them, but they're there. I, they will come out in another piece somewhere along the line. <laughs> I'll watch for them. <laughs> Yes, that's just playing with placement here, which is a fun part of the process, really. Oh, yeah. Mm. Painting the background. <laughs> I wanted to, I needed to build it slowly, the background colour slowly, the sky colour, because I didn't want it to dominate. So I built layers of colour so that it, um, I could stop when I felt like it was ready and not going to take over. Yep. Because I really needed, you know, that foreground, middle ground, background to this quilt. So it's starting to build up the mosaic here. Yeah, so then I moved on to placing the hundreds, or felt like hundreds anyway, of little pieces of um, mosaic and trying to create a colourway through that so that it wasn't all just a big jumble. So in the final piece, you'll see that there's a movement from blue to green to blue and the placement of that around so that it, it enhanced 
the um, central motive rather than detracted from it. And it looks like, you know, there's a whole lot of odd shapes in that, but it's actually quite challenging if you've done mosaic as well. It's challenging to um, find that right piece for that little spot. Yes. <laughs> it was good. It was a good, pro good part of the process. It's lovely to have a, a combination of methods, you know, the painting, the, ha the exact hand painting to the freer hand painting to the mosaic and then, um, you know, playing with placing them um, and where to place them on the on the quilt. Yes, there are some tiny pieces there. They mainly look like batiks. Yes, I like batik because they it's a um, closer weave and doesn't fray as much. So I and I, I mean I love batik anyway. So part of what the, the fabric selection that I like, but it's because they don't fray. Mm. So that's very um, important for raw edge applique. I mean that's why people use hand dyes that are done on tight weaves and batiks. Yes, Nothing that's worse right. than sort of horrible fabric fraying all over the place. That's right. And I love raw edge applique, but um, I get very frustrated if I see those, if it starts to fray too much. Yes. You can't help but a little bit of fraying, but it's nice to I keep, well, I like the edges clean. Um, so this is the final placement. It hasn't been ironed down yet, but I have got to this point in thinking that I that it's all in the right place. And then I iron it down. And you mentioned earlier that it was um, 50 by 50, which is about 20 inches, isn't it? Mm, that's right. And w one of the things that I you know, wanted to say when I was thinking about this is um, the amount of decisions that you make along the way when you're creating a, an art quilt. You know, there's nobody telling you where to put and you think you've got to make all of those decisions yourself and it's actually quite a um it's an exciting challenge but it's actually a challenge to you know use your design knowledge and i agree with what you're saying because i think that's what i like about creating my own art quilts is the decision making processes and the problem solving i enjoy that very much that's right it's interesting i was asked um a question recently whether I have a, an innate sense of aesthetic rules in my <laughs> internal system and I thought you know it was a really good question but it was a question that I had to think about because is it from experience and learned knowledge or is it an innate sense of how it should be very and, interesting. Um, it's hard to separate both yes. how to separate it some some of the quilters that I have spoken to do have their own sets of rules. And yes. Just go with the flow. Hard question. Mm. I'm not sure if I have the, the answer to that yet, but it's had me thinking as well. So we've started yeah. quilting here. Yes, I very tentatively started quilting here <laughs> because <laughs> this is one of my favourite. It is, it is, and I wasn't sh quite sure how to go about it, and I, you know, this is one of my favourite bits, and it actually took a long time to paint, and I thought I don't want to, you know, have to repaint it, so I very tentatively started quilting. Because it was so exact, the quilting needed to be exact, mm -hmm. I felt like it needed to be exact, and so it was quite slow process, this part, but um, I was quite happy with the, the result at the end. I think something like this emotive which has definite shapes and edges is possibly a good place to start because there are lots of other areas that need to be filled somehow and, and at least here you've got well I've got some lines here at least I, I can. Yes yes that's that's true Lisa and it, it, it's important to start where you can kind of maybe step off from you know and <laughs> launch off from I suppose is, is, is one way to do it yeah so here we have the stitching I mean I know it's the light from the um the Benina sewing machine but it really is glowing isn't it it's just beautiful and you put <laughs> around every piece um yes so the central motif was very exact you know the stitching and I wanted to contrast the mosaic with that because mosaic is a rougher edge and so I deliberately went rough around or not rough but you know um, didn't try and make it really straight lines or um, I didn't want it to be too exact because I wanted it to simulate mosaic so there's a contrast between that central motif and the mosaic pieces. And have you gone um, couple of times on those mosaic pieces? Yes, to kind of give that um, sense of 
well, raw rage, I suppose. <laughs> and I can see some lines jumping from individual shapes. So you didn't stop and start each one and cut it off. You just sort of, I guess, did some anchoring stitches and skipped to the next that's one. That's right. Yeah. That's and, but they're all different colours. So I would go um, jump to the one that I thought the colour would match. I did try to match the colour a little bit. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't want to do green on the blue. Um, so I would do all of the ones that I felt could use that colour and then I would change colour wow. just to save time really with a whole lot of um, rethreading of the machine. My, a lot of the quilting for this one was um, outlining and and going around the edge to highlight the shapes and the, the design rather than often I will, you know, do a thread painting or or do thread painting or free motion stitching to add a highlight. I didn't feel like it needed any more highlighting, so yeah. I went around, did a lot of outlining to define it, I guess, a bit more. So this one is, is very close to the end, and I'm um, just filling in some of those larger areas with a little bit of free motion quilting and a bit of texture to create a bit of variety. So the sky is um, quite curvy and those walls are a little bit more angular, free motion stitching. And I've gone around all those stairs very carefully. <laughs> and this is the final piece. <laughs> this is the final piece. We're all stitched down and uh, I put a facing on it rather than a binding because I didn't feel it needed um, a binding. I sometimes bind my quilts, but um, only if I think it will enhance the, the finished product. Well, I hope the exhibition does evolve into um, something that will travel. Watch out for it. The name of the exhibition is International Cities Challenge and it's um, through the Nihon Heritage Quilt Guild in Japan. It will travel through New Zealand. Um, it just depends on what happens with the rest of the, in the rest of the world in terms of when and if it will travel to other countries. So hopefully watch out to see it. it. Yes. Putting, um, well, there isn't a link to it yet, but I'll just uh, mention it uh, as well as all of Lois's uh, links in the description box below. Uh, there'll be a link to the exhibition on the Aotearoa Quilters website or Facebook page. And you are also one of the reps for SAQWA for the Oceania region, which is my region. So we have Zoom meetings and we've recently, last year, had our first exhibition and it's quite exciting to watch our region grow, isn't it? Yes, definitely. And to have that connection between Australia and New Zealand art quilters is wonderful. It is lovely. Mm. Thank, thank goodness for mm. Zoom as well. Yes, definitely. You've got two quilts behind you. I'd just like you to quickly mention them. Mm. The one on... This side uh, is called Each Day is a New Page and it comprises of nine individual um, panels that I did and they came from a watercolour painting that I did of a chrysalis and as I began, I think I mentioned in, I like to use every bit of the cutout that I, of the raw edge applique that I um, cut out. <laughs> so I very carefully cut out all of those and place them in different ways and it grew from uh, the first one and became a series of nine which I then hand stitched all together so there's match stitch quilting on the individual sections and then I've hand stitched them together. I'm not sure of the hand stitch <laughs> it's like a blanket <laughs> stitch joined together is it a faggot stitch or something like that um, someone was telling me you're asking the wrong person here <laughs> And there's hand stitching and machine stitching um, in the individual pieces. So it's about the chrysalis and uh, each day is a new page. So starting afresh each day, moving forward, right. opening up, flying. Just sort of about mm. what we're doing now, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. And the other so one? The other one is called Piece by Piece and it's um, a play on words and it's uh, as in it's P-E-A-C-E -E because it's a piece lily and it's been pieced, which is a quilting, terminolo ter quilting terminology. And it's, it grew out of just uh, a small 
peace lily quilt that I did and, and won a merit for um, with the floral challenge with a Aotearoa quilters. And I one day I was playing with those peace lily shapes and putting them in a circle and it just grew from there and became a mandala. And I quite like that, you know, the title of Peace by Peace because um, we can't actually change the world as an individual, but if we all do our little bit, piece by piece, we might change the world. Yes. So it's a positive, hopeful. I want to thank you so much for your time today. I hope everyone has enjoyed learning a little bit more about you and your work, a little bit about New Zealand as well. We've sort of yes. captured a little <laughs> bit about New Zealand. And if you've enjoyed this video, I hope you will subscribe. Uh, there is a link below. Please click the link, click the thumbs up. So I'm inspired to make lots more videos. And so I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I've really had a delightful time talking to you too. Thank you. Great. Okay, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Bye.